Hey there. I just wanted to highlight some things from yesterday's debate, particularly the warmongering elements. Let's watch. As President of the United States, what would you be urging Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to do at this moment? Governor DeSantis. I would be telling Bibi, finish the job once and for all with these butchers, Hamas. They're terrorists. They're massacring innocent people. They would wipe every Jew off the globe if they could. He cannot live with that threat right by his country. The Hamas should release every hostage and they should unconditionally surrender. And how do you think Hamas will be put into a situation where they'll surrender like that? What will Israel have to do to make them surrender like that? What they've been doing? Killing 10,000 people? More than 10,000 people now, uh, more than 3,000 of them being people that are under 18. Um, that, that's, that's what we should continue doing? I'm sick of hearing the media, I'm sick of hearing other people blame Israel just for defending itself. When defending yourself involves killing thousands and thousands of innocent people, including children, um, something's wrong. We will stand with Israel in word and in deed, in public and in private. Yeah, that's blind allegiance. Thank you. Ambassador Haley, what would you do? What would you be urging Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to do? Would you consider humanitarian pause, for example? The first thing I said to him when it happened was I said, finish them. Finish them. Finish them. Yep, no matter what it takes, I guess. And the reason is I worked on this every day when I was at the United Nations. And we have to remember that they have to, one, eliminate Hamas. Yes, it will be easy to do. Just, just eliminate them. And, and it's, it's, there it is. To support Israel with whatever they need, whenever they need it. Yep, no matter what it is. And three, make sure we bring our hostages home. We need to be very clear-eyed to know there would be no Hamas without Iran. There would be no Hezbollah without Iran. Bomb, 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 Iran. There would not be the Houthis without Iran. And there wouldn't be the Iranian militias in Syria and Iraq that are trying to hear, hit our military men and women if it hadn't been for Iran. And who is funding Iran right now? China is buying oil from Iran. Russia is getting drones and missiles from Iran. And there is an unholy alliance. Our enemies, our enemies, everyone, our enemies. We need to be clear-eyed. The last thing we need to do is to tell Israel what to do. The only thing we should be doing is supporting them and eliminating Hamas. It is not. Yeah, no, no matter how they do it, we just need to support them. That Israel needs America. America needs Israel. They are the tip of the spear when it comes to this. We need Israel? Why? Islamic terrorism, and we need to make sure that we have their backs in that process. All right. Israel's actions are some of why so much of the Middle East hates the West. Thank you. Mr. Ramaswamy, Mr. Ramaswamy, any daylight between you and the candidates we just heard in this issue? Ramaswamy is the only one who didn't want to beat the war drums, so... On what you would tell the Prime Minister? Not in terms of what I would tell the Prime Minister, no. In fact, I would go one step further. The founding vision of Israel was based on the idea that they don't want to depend on anybody else's sympathy or direction in defending themselves. So what I would tell Bibi is that Israel has the right and the responsibility to defend itself. I would tell him to smoke those terrorists on his southern border, and then I'll tell him as President of the United States, I'll be smoking the terrorists on our southern border. That's his responsibility, this is our responsibility, that's how we move forward. But I want to be careful to avoid making the mistakes from the neocon establishment of the past. So as you can see, he's not taking a stance against Israel, but he also doesn't want the United States to be involved. Corrupt politicians in both parties spent trillions, killed millions, made billions for themselves in places like Iraq and Afghanistan, fighting wars that sent thousands of our sons and daughters, people my age, to die in wars that did not advance anyone's interests, adding $7 trillion to our national debt. And Joe Biden sold off our foreign policy. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, got a $5 million bribe from Ukraine. That's why we're sending $200 billion back to that same country. The fact of the matter is the Republican Party is not that much better. You have the likes of Nikki Haley, who stepped down from her time at the UN. Bankrupt or in debt is, was her family. Then she becomes a military contractor. She joins the board of Boeing and otherwise, and is now a multimillionaire. So I think that that's wrong when Republicans do it or Democrats do it. That's the choice we face. 
Oh, come on, Vivek, you made some money in some very underhanded ways. A pharmaceutical scam. Come on, man. Do you want a leader from a different generation who's going to put this country first? Or do you want Dick Cheney in three-inch heels? All right, Mr. In which Ramaswamy. case, we've got two of them on stage Mr. Ramaswamy, thank you. Man, that was brutal, both to Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. Senator, uh, Senator Scott, yes. Senator, same question to you about you're the president, you're on the phone in the Oval Office with the prime minister, you tell him what? Get ready to hear massive warmongering. This guy's the worst. But, but number one, I, I would tell Prime Minister, Prime Minister Netanyahu, not only do you have the responsibility and the right to wipe Hamas off of the map, we will support you. We will be there with you. We'll stand shoulder to shoulder. There will be no daylight. But I, I would change the, the station a little bit, though, and head back home to, to America. I would say to President Biden, diplomacy only is a weak strategy. Ouch. Appeasement leads to war. Diplomacy and appeasement leads to war. Okay. From President Obama to President Biden. Obama sent millions to Iran. Frankly, President Biden has sent billions to Iran. That is why I've said that there's blood dripping from the hands of President Obama and President Biden. I would tell President Biden with great clarity, if you want to stop the 40 plus attacks on military personnel in the Middle East, you have to strike in Iran. If you want to make a difference, you cannot just continue to have strikes in Syria on warehouses. You actually have to cut off the head of the snake, and the head of the snake is Iran. Just a stupid thing to notice. He pronounces it three different ways. There's Iran, there's Iran, and there's Iran. And not simply their proxies. In order for us to have a powerful response from America... We have to be in a position of strength. As President of the United States, my foreign policy is simple. You cannot negotiate with evil. You have to destroy it. Well, that was one of the most horrifying things I've heard a presidential candidate say. Let's be glad he doesn't have a chance, right? All right, Senator Scott, thank you. Governor Christie, I want to get you to weigh in here. Look, Lester, these problems are so big and serious that the first thing I would say to, Pre to Prime Minister Netanyahu is pretty simple. Honestly, on this issue, he seems to be the most diplomatic. He's also for having the U.S. get involved if they needed to, but he seems to be the most diplomatic. America is here, no matter what it is you need at any time, to preserve the state of Israel. Remember that Hamas's main goal is to get rid of Israel. Yes, that's true. And I see some really awful sentiments in some of these protests, too. Um, you could call them anti-Israel protests. You could call them pro-Palestinian protests. But at many of them, they basically suggest that Israel doesn't have the right to exist, that they're just colonizing and it's an apartheid state and they, should, they just shouldn't even have the right to exist. I mean, I, I don't believe in some sort of the, the religious side of things. Oh, the Bible says they have the right to exist. No, I, I, I don't believe in it in that sort of way. I just think that, yeah, the Jews have been persecuted for a long time, and it would be nice if they could have some sort of homeland. Now, should, should everyone be able to, anyone of any belief system, should they get their own homeland? No, probably not. And maybe we shouldn't, you know, make exceptions for Israel in that regard, but still is to get Israel absolutely off the map. Now, there are three things I think I would say to him when he asked for advice. The first I would say is that it is absolutely your obligation to protect the territorial integrity of Israel. Secondly, to make sure you protect the security and the safety of your people. Every time something happens to compromise either one of those things, it creates greater unrest in the entire region. Second, you must go in and make sure that Hamas can never do this again. Uh, the fact is that Israel and their intelligence community failed. They failed here and they failed the people of the state of Israel. And so we need to work closely and better together to make sure, one, that they're degraded, and two, that we know everything that's going on inside the Gaza Strip, when it's going on, so that something like this can't happen to kill 1,400 individuals again. And the third thing is to keep your eye on the ball. Make sure that we continue to isolate Iran, 
work with the reasonable nations in the Middle East, the other Arab nations who want to partner with you, and make sure that we continue to isolate Iran so that their only friends in the world are the part of the evil foursome, China, Russia, Governor, Iran, and North Governor Korea. Christie. Yeah, I let him go on for a bit, but he didn't really say anything that I could really pick apart. He was just describing his plan. These are the things that he would do. And so, I mean, at least he's less warmongery than, than most of the others. You know, Vivek really stands out as being the least warmongering out of them. But uh, was it kind of a useless debate because most people are still going to go for Trump? Uh, yeah, it probably was. It probably was. Trump is still, comp I mean, wipes away the <laughs> the competition as far as the, the polls. So, um, in fact, he went up uh, several points after this debate. So, it's kind of weird. Anyway, thanks for watching.